I know <laughs> I'm not here to really make you afraid of God's Word. I'm just here to share God's Word with you. So let's continue to walk with God every day and grow the fruits of the Spirit. So I'm going to also move on to the very first fruit that's mentioned out of Galatians 5, which is love. So let's continue on. The main verse again is Galatians 5, 22 through 23. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. Alright, so I'm going to start out by saying, now you might be wondering, why is love the first fruit that is mentioned in these verses here? Okay, love encompasses everything in the Bible. It's the whole purpose the Bible is written. Okay, I'm going to give you some few points and some examples here talking about love here. Okay, love, it tells us the very nature of God. So here I have 1 John 4.16. And we have known and believed the love that God hath to us. God is love. And he that dwelleth in love dwelleth in God, and God in him. So God is love. Okay. And our love that we should have should be godly love. We need to dwell in God. Alright. The next example I have, it's um, love fulfills the law. So Galatians 5.14 it says, for all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. In other words, so here, in other words, the entire Old Testament law, that humongous Old Testament that's like, would take you nine months to read. <laughs> all of it can be boiled down to one little thing. Love your neighbor as yourself. Because however you want to treat yourself, that's how you should be treating other people. You need to view it the same way. <clears throat> Romans uh, 13, 8 through 10 says, Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Love worketh no ill to his neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. Love fulfills the law. So, in other words, if you have true love, you will not even desire to do evil things to people around you. You will have compassion for people. You can have godly love. You're going to treat them respectfully. You're going to you're just going to go out of your way to help people, you know, and and that's showing the love of God to people, you know, and that's something that you need in your life. And that's it's the main thing that you need. The, the main fruit of the Spirit that you need is love. Because God is love and He desires the same out of His people. Amen. <clears throat> if you have love, you won't want to commit sins against God or other people. So, you're not even going to desire these things, you know. You're just going to desire to walk with God and to love God with all that you have in your life. Amen. <clears throat> My next point here is, without God's love, there would be no one saved. 1 John 3.16 I'm not sure if this scripture really goes with it very well, but... Whereby perceive we the love of God. Well, it does. Because He laid down His life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives... 
for the brethren. So Christ gave his life for us. Are we willing to do the same? Do we feel the same way? I mean, that's that's a lot of love right there. That Jesus Christ came came down to the earth. God came down to the earth. Died on the cross for the sins of humanity. You cannot get a greater love than that. So, are we willing to do the same for God? Would, would we be willing to give that kind of same love to God if, if you know, it's required of us? Just think about that. Alright, <clears throat> moving on. Love is our salvation. So here I have Romans 5, Romans chapter 5, um, verse 5 through 10. And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. For when we were yet without strength, in due time Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet peradventure for a good man some would even dare to die. But God commendeth his love toward us, in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. We weren't even saved yet. We may not even have known God at all, but he still died for us. So verse 9, here we go. Much more then, being now justified by his blood, we shall be saved from wrath through him. For if, when we were enemies, we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more being reconciled, we are saved by his life. So, when Jesus died, he died for all of humanity. He died for the ungodly. He died for the sinners, the saints, the, the sick, you know, every single person. When it says that God died for his people, he died for the, all of humanity. We're not talking about Israel here. That was his chosen nation. The people of God are every single person in the world. There's a big difference because he made the world, so every person is God's. So... It's just amazing that, it's just amazing seeing the love of God. <clears throat> now what does reconciled mean? Reconciled means to make oneself no longer opposed, reestablish friendly relationships with, or to reconsecrate, reconsecrate. So, the death of Christ allows us to reconsecrate our life, or to make ourselves to not be in opposition with God. So, Jesus' death makes it so it's possible that we can come back to Him. His death allows us to receive salvation by the infilling of the Holy Ghost. Now, what is the Holy Ghost? The Holy Ghost is being filled by the Spirit of God. You can, you can reference this in Acts chapter 2. Well, really the whole book of Acts is when the salvation plan for the New Testament first was spoken, was in the book of Acts, after the death of Jesus. You can also reference my my very first lesson here on Pentecostal Podcast. It's called Explaining Pentecost. And then I'll talk more about uh, salvation, oneness, um, things like that. Um, Romans 5.5 5 says, And hope maketh not ashamed, because the love of God is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Ghost, which is given unto us. God's love is most evident in our life when we receive the Holy Ghost, which is God's Spirit. That's evidenced by speaking in another language. That's how you know you receive the Holy Ghost. So we need His Spirit so we have his love that he has for others. 